Item number, SCP-038. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-038 is to be watered twice per day via overhead mister. Should the mister break for any reason, attendants should water SCP-038 by hand until it has been fixed. Lighting is provided by computer-controlled lighting array. Attendants watering SCP-038 by hand and maintenance personnel fixing mister or lighting should wear hazmat suits to prevent accidental cloning. Description SCP-038 was found on an abandoned farm in New York in 19... It was at first thought to be a common apple tree. However, upon closer inspection, it became apparent that SCP-038 was growing things other than apples and, in fact, other than fruit. SCP-038 has the ability to clone any object that touches its bark. Objects begin growing almost instantaneously and reach maturity within a matter of minutes. A weight limit of 90.9 kilograms, 200 pounds per object has been previously recorded. Objects that SCP-038 has thus far cloned include apples, oranges, watermelons, eggplants, candy bars, snack foods, televisions, toasters, laptops, keys, chairs, wine, DVDs, CDs, cats, dogs, and people. Human and animal cloning through SCP-038 is not recommended, as they appear to age quickly. The majority of these clones live, on average, two weeks. After thorough examination of the deceased clones, it has been determined that they had begun to ferment before death. Object is currently held on Site-23, and there are currently no plans to move it. Addendum 1 Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of items from the vending machines. Addendum 2 Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of personal items. Addendum 3 Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of movies and music. Addendum 4 Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of cans of Miller, Budweiser, and Foster's. Dr. Klein has furthermore expressed customary disapproval of the quality of such cloned items. Document 338-1 I would like to remind all personnel that SCP-038 is not, I repeat, not a toy. It should not be used for cloning car keys, movies, music, or items from the vending machines. If this behavior continues, I will be forced to limit access to SCP-038. Dr. Klein Document 338-2 It has been noted that SCP-038 is able to clone SCP-500. However, such pills only work 30% of the time, with chance of successful healing dropping as time since cloned increases. In 60% of the cases where the infection is permanent, symptoms of infection remain, though further infection is neutralized. SCP-038 Partial Testing Log Select Experiments Only for full text records and reports, contact affiliated researchers for authorization. Date, August 11th. Intent, confirmation of mass limit, investigation into consequences of exceeding limit. Summary of test results. 400 pound steel ingot made contact with the outer bark of SCP-038. Chamber vacated as a precaution. Cloned ingot grew at typical speed, but growth halted abruptly short of completion. Examination of the end of the aborted facsimile revealed a rough texture superficially resembling miniature-scale tree bark. Item detached from SCP-038 as typical, and was subsequently found to weigh 90.91 kilograms, or almost precisely 200 pounds. Date, August 11th. Intent, investigation into duplication of non-biological animate matter. Summary of test results, SCP-173 deemed a suitable test subject because of its lack of verifiable life processes, introduced into containment chamber by Class D personnel. Contact made with the outer bark of SCP-038, and SCP-173 returned immediately to containment. SCP-173 facsimile began development at typical speed, beginning at point of contact. As consistent with previous results, growth halted at the 200-pound threshold, in this case terminating development after replication of the head, right arm, 
and partial upper torso. Class D test subject was ordered to break eye contact with clone. When test subject eventually blinked, no movement was observed in cloned material. Extinguishing and re-establishment of containment chamber light supply revealed no apparent reaction from cloned material. Experiment concluded. During storage of cloned portion of SCP-173, it was observed that the partial facsimile was in fact making violent gestures, at a dramatically slower rate. Movement was shown to continue, regardless of state of observation. Item Number SCP-097 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-097 is contained within the limits of the property where it was initially discovered, Zone SCP-097. The property is surrounded by an 8-meter tall concrete block fence, fitted with barbed wire and security camera systems. Satellite images of Zone SCP-097 are to be doctored, removing all traces of the area. Any and all new plant growth outside the containment area suspected to originate from within the SCP is to be sterilized through application of boiling salt water and or incinerated. Absolutely all abnormal behavior is to be reported to Dr. Bridge within 10 minutes of occurrence. If any personnel or their families experience hallucinations or thematically related dreams outside of containment, they are to contact Dr. Bridge to schedule treatment. Localities surrounding SCP-097, specifically are to be monitored from the 1st of April until the 1st of November every year for affected civilians. Medical establishments dealing with sleep abnormalities are to be monitored for signs of SCP-097's influence. Civilians below the age of 16 encountered alone within one square kilometer of zone SCP-097 are to be taken into Foundation custody and are to be treated with a Class B amnestic and returned home, or the nearest police station. Personnel tasked with the return of civilians are to avoid public exposure. Each agent is to be assigned a cover story to follow if they do encounter civilians en route to their destinations. The morning after the first frost of the year, a team of 25 agents armed with agricultural tools are to enter SCP-097 and clear away the outer plant matter. This process is not to continue past dusk. Description SCP-097 is a 10-acre area of land in the state of in the Midwestern United States. It is the abandoned remains of the County Fair 1969, an area of approximately 2.3 kilometers squared, or approximately 5.4 square miles. Structures within the SCP area exist in a state of moderate disrepair, consistent with the expected age and environment. At the center of SCP-097 lie the remains of a 1956 GMC pickup truck, the majority of which is crushed beneath a colossal pumpkin of unknown subtype. Henceforth, SCP-097-1. SCP-097-1 stands approximately 7.4 meters or 24.3 feet tall, and 8.1 meters or 26.8 feet in diameter at its widest. Current estimates put SCP-097-1 at approximately 15,000 kilograms, or approximately 33,070 pounds. This pumpkin remains roughly spherical in shape, instead of spreading out under its own weight as would be expected of a plant of its size. The remaining portion of SCP-097, approximately 2 kilometers squared, is overgrown with several dozen varieties of pumpkins, with over 70 subspecies yet identified and many previously unknown to agriculture. Many of these pumpkins have been shown capable of growing to enormous sizes, the average estimated weight being around 250 kilograms, average 550 pounds. These pumpkins, along with the other assorted crops, grow with, on, and around the remains of the 1969 fairgrounds, creating a maze-like arrangement of plant life. The average height of the walls within SCP-097 is 1.6 meters, though this may vary from year to year. Between April and November each year, the area within SCP-097 has produced a number of anomalous phenomena, ranging from benign to implicitly aggressive. To date, 17 agents have been severely maimed within SCP-097, eight having died. Event Log SCP-097 This is a general incident log for SCP-097 for the cycle between September 1st and November 1st. This is an abridged version. Please requisition full individual reports from Dr. Bridge. During this time, 
Four civilian children were captured and returned to their families. Event 1. Cameras 3B, 4A, 4C, 5B view child, approximately four years of age, walk between tangles of plant matter towards SCP-0971 over an eight-minute period. Child appeared to be dragging a stuffed animal. Notes. Child appeared on footage during review period. No figure was viewed at the time of recording. Event 2. Human scream heard from within SCP-097, heard throughout the site. On-site personnel described it as possessing a small child's voice, sustained for approximately three minutes before stopping abruptly. Notes. Staff reported feeling as if they were being watched during the event. Event 3. Several bedsheet ghosts are seen throughout various security feeds throughout the day, would only appear for approximately one to three seconds before vanishing again. Staff did not report seeing any anomalous entities firsthand. Notes. Patrols doubled for the remaining time in the SCP's cycle. Event 4. Unidentifiable singing is heard throughout the site, persisting for three hours before becoming silent. Recordings reveal song-like gibberish, with up to 30 individual children's voices singing at any time. Notes. Recordings archived for future study. Event 5. Agent McRoy cuts a pumpkin's vine with machete. Severed vine proceeds to bleed approximately 50 liters of human blood before shriveling. Notes. Blood type AB negative. No DNA match. Event 6. Overnight, two separate pumpkin patches grew into the rough approximations of human figures lying on the ground. Notes. Destroyed without incident. Event 7. Agent Long found decapitated. Neck against a pumpkin. Notes. Disappeared en route to a restroom break. Event 8. All light bulbs on site burn out within a two minute period. Notes. Critical areas repaired before nightfall. Event 9. Sudden shift noted in the location of several dozen gourd plants. Notes. Time and nature of actual event. Unknown. Event 10. Agent Cole accidentally damages and breaks pumpkin during weekly examination of SCP-097. Pumpkin splits open, revealing a complete human child's skeleton in the fetal position within. Notes. Female approximately five years old. No DNA match. Event 11. 29 freshly decapitated crows. Corvus Bracarinkos, found outside SCP-097's containment wall. Notes. None. Event 12. Matured pumpkin plant found to have replaced a potted plant growing inside Dr. Bridges' office. Notes. Indoor plants banned from the site. Pumpkin incinerated immediately. Event 13. Agent Matthews falls unconscious during patrol and cannot be awoken until removed from property. Notes. Agent reported dreaming of autumn colors and the smell of leaves. Full recovery. Reassigned to desk work pending examination. Event 14. Research assistant Sturm reports overwhelming taste and scent of pumpkin permeating her senses. No other personnel report anomaly. Notes. Transferred off-site. Examination pending. Event 15. Sounds of steady drums play throughout the day, from 00 to 2359. Notes. Source of sound unknown. Recordings archived for future study. Event 16. Male child, approximately six years of age and clad in pajamas, seen climbing through corn stalks on the eastern end of SCP-097, moving towards SCP-0971. Notes. Lost to SCP-0971. How the child was able to escape notice by personnel until after he was lost to the SCP is unknown. Event 17. All personnel within 3.6 kilometers of SCP-0971 report hallucinations of orange haze and children's laughter. Notes. Personnel evacuated to a distance outside the area of effect. Personnel screened for mental interference. Event 18. All power and backup power to the area failed. Upon recovery, a number of pumpkins within SCP-097 were found to have changed into carved lanterns. Notes. It is unknown how SCP-097 generated and lit candles. Team 097 Alpha and Beta tasked to destroy lanterns after sunrise. 
Event 19. Team 097 Alpha reports seeing and hearing children playing among the flora within SCP-097. Recordings lack the entities expected from the reports. Notes. Children noted to be clad in pajamas. Teams pulled from SCP. Screened for mental interference. Event 20. Zaya Mays and Dorada kernels fall from the sky around SCP-097. Does not fall within containment walls. Notes. Area cleansed with flame units and replanted with non-native grasses. Pavement of outside area pending. Event 21. Research assistant O'Toole overcome with nausea and vomits pumpkin seeds. O'Toole did not eat pumpkin seeds previous to vomiting. Notes. Research assistant O'Toole transferred to site for examination. Seeds incinerated with prejudice. Event 22. Research assistant O'Toole reported to have died overnight. Autopsy reveals thoracic cavity was filled with pumpkin seeds. Notes. Body incinerated at site. All personnel scheduled for full physical examination. Event 23. Unintelligible whispering gibberish heard by fertile female personnel throughout the area when in view of SCP-097. Phenomenon continues throughout the day, continuing for the duration of SCP-097 cycle, i.e. until November 1st. Notes. Associated personnel removed from duty and scheduled for examination. Event 24. Headlights of vehicle underneath SCP-0971 light and stay lit until daybreak. Notes. None. Event 25. Fruit trees within SCP-097 blossom over the course of five hours, beginning at roughly 700 hours. Flowers wither and fall soon after. Notes. None. Event 26. Pumpkins near south entrance to SCP-097 began spontaneously bleeding from the stem. Each continued bleeding for three hours. Notes. Blood type AB negative. No DNA match. Event 27. Several dozen unidentified spheres of red light viewed drifting above SCP-097 and surrounding area. When light was shown directly on the spheres, a piercing shriek was heard. Notes. Personnel called into the main building until the spheres dissipated at dawn. Event 28. Sounds of steady drums are recorded from within SCP-097. Drums persist for the following 12 hours. Notes. No source identified. Recordings archived for future study. Event 29. All strawberry plants within SCP-097 wither in unison. Notes. None. Event 30. Between 25 and 30 animate human skeletons of varying size are recorded breaking out of larger pumpkins within SCP-097. Skeletons traverse through SCP-097's flora to the northeast peach tree and hang themselves from its branches using lengths of grapevine, electrical cable, and decaying rope. Skeletons ceased anomalous behavior after pantomiming death by hanging. Death throes continued for approximately 23 minutes. Notes. Skeletons recovered after first frost. All appeared under 12 years of age. No DNA matches. Skeletons incinerated after examination. Addendum. Historical note. Prior to the construction of SCP-097's containment wall, instances of what are now known as SCP-21711 were occasionally observed to form fragmented walls, and at one point a near-complete ring of 2171 around SCP-097's area of effect. This behavior ceased following the containment wall's completion. The purpose and implications behind this interaction are as of yet unknown. Effects of SCP-097 on Children In addition to its immediate effects outlined in Event Log SCP-097, SCP-097-1 appears to produce an undetectable signal towards children in an undetermined range. For clarity, Children will refer to individuals up to the age of 10. Beginning in early April, civilian children within SCP-097's undefined range may be overcome with somnambulism on clear nights. Affected children will move around their homes, stopping to face closed doorways for several seconds before moving on to the next nearest doorway, eventually returning to bed. At first, this behavior will occur only once a week, beginning with only the doors on a single floor. 
This sleepwalking will become more frequent, by mid-August happening every night. If forcibly awoken at any time during these episodes, they will scream for several seconds before succumbing to a degree of confusion. After an affected child is awoken in this manner, the effect will cease, and the child will never show any further signs of SCP-097's influence. Over the course of two to three months, these episodes will become more thorough, affected individuals seeking out each doorway inside their home, as well as those on their household's property, such as garages, car doors, and fence gates. Eventually, they will begin visiting the front doors of neighbors. Beginning in September, affected children who have remained undisturbed during these episodes will begin to remain outside at sunrise, laying on grass near their homestead and returning to full REM sleep. Affected children may recall dreams centering around autumn activities. Between September 1st and November 1st, if the affected children have not been awoken during the preceding sleepwalking episodes, they will cease the previously established activity during the sleepwalk and instead begin to walk directly towards SCP-097's location. They will travel over fields and down secondary roads, steadily moving towards SCP-097. Local geography consists mostly of undeveloped foundation-owned property, facilitating uninterrupted travel. Upon arrival at SCP-097, an affected child will sit down before SCP-097-1 and begin singing unidentifiable gibberish as music begins to play. While a number of instruments have been recorded, simple drums and pipes are the most consistently encountered. After several minutes, childlike entities will crawl out from tangled flora or break out of larger pumpkins within SCP-097. The children will be wearing whatever they were last seen with, most often pajamas or similar clothing. Many of these entities match those children known to be lost to SCP-097-1. The entities will surround the affected civilian child dancing and singing in a circle as SCP-097-1 begins to emit dim light. The affected child will awaken, normally expressing a great deal of terror. The instant any vocalization is produced, the entities will swarm and kill the child. Methods used are different in each instance, but usually involve dismemberment or strangulation. At this point, any and all efforts to interrupt the entities will fail, whether through breakdown of equipment sudden intangibility of the subjects, or express violence on the part of SCP-097. After the death of the affected child, SCP-097-1 will split open and the entities will hurl the remains into it before climbing in themselves. SCP-097-1 will then close and the music will stop. Before the containment wall was erected, at least children between the ages of 3 and 10 are known to have been lost to SCP-097. Item number, SCP-046. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. The land surrounding SCP-046 has been purchased and surrounded by multiple layers of security, including fencing, barricades, and lethal effect traps. Multiple signs marking the area as private property are to be prominently displayed. The area is to be heavily guarded at all times to prevent access by civilians to SCP-046. All personnel working around or within a 50-kilometer radius of SCP-046 are to undergo rigorous medical testing to ensure the absence of any potentially life-threatening illnesses. Additionally, increased mental health examinations are to be administered to ensure that no personnel inclined or potentially inclined towards self-harm or self-destructive tendencies are allowed within the 50-kilometer radius. Any injured personnel are to be evacuated to a hospital outside of the 50-kilometer zone around SCP-046. All vegetation surrounding SCP-046 is to be destroyed, and all animals attempting to access SCP-046 are to be terminated and destroyed before reaching its outer perimeter. Any personnel showing unusual interest either in SCP-046 or in traveling to the region near SCP-046 are to undergo medical examinations as detailed above. Any modification to these containment procedures are to be approved by O5 Command before being added to this containment document. Any personnel attempting to modify this document without appropriate authorization are to be demoted and reassigned. Description. SCP-046 is a predatory botanical mass located in southwestern Kentucky. 
SCP-046 is composed of two parts. SCP-046-1 is a large mass of vegetative matter, composed largely of plants indigenous to the region, including Quercus alba, Ilex aquifolium, and Lanicera sempervirens, though several offshoots composed of other plant species are also present. SCP-046-2 is the land in the immediate vicinity of SCP-046-1, extending to a roughly circular area 20 meters in radius from its base. This area is SCP-046's primary feeding area. SCP-046 is capable of attracting prey within a 50-kilometer radius through hallucinogenic means. All evacuations of personnel should carry them outside of this radius to disable SCP-046's effect. Animals, including humans, suffering from potentially life-threatening physical injuries or diseases, or who are afflicted by psychological disorders that induce self-destructive tendencies, feel a powerful compulsion to come to SCP-046-2 and lie in a prostrate position facing SCP-046-1. Individuals lying in such a position are rapidly attacked by an unusually powerful combination of saprophytic organisms and opportunistic infections, including several strains of methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus (MRSA), known to induce necrotizing fasciitis, also known as flesh-eating bacteria. A form of fungal spore similar to Stachybotrys chartarum, or black mold, which poisons prey organisms and induces paralysis. And finally, complete consumption by several heretofore unknown species of insect that emerge from the inside of SCP-046-1 during the final stage of feeding. SCP-046 appears to derive nutrition through the complete digestion of affected individuals particularly larger mammals, such as humans. It is unknown whether SCP-046 is capable of growth. As such, all steps are to be taken to ensure that SCP-046 is deprived of prey until more information is known about its abilities. These efforts are to include terminating individuals prior to their arrival at SCP-046 and disposing of their bodies in a separate location. Addendum 046-A Investigation is ongoing into potential mimetic effects brought about by knowledge of SCP-046 due to anomalous effects demonstrated by certain personnel in response to SCP-046. Access to document 046-07 is restricted to level 4 personnel and above. Item number SCP-046 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures the land surrounding SCP-046 is to be cordoned off, marked as private property, and surrounded by multiple layers of fencing. The area is to be guarded by no less than 10 guards, though minimal armaments are required. While knowledge of SCP-046 effects is not to be made widely known, personnel afflicted with life-threatening diseases may be permitted to enter SCP-046-2 after psychological screening for self-destructive tendencies. Likewise. D-Class personnel selected for termination may be effectively exposed to SCP-046-2 to facilitate this process. Due to the lack of threat to Foundation security, individuals not employed by the Foundation may be permitted access to SCP-046, though Foundation needs for access take first priority. Description: SCP-046 is composed of two parts. SCP-046-1 is a cylindrical area 5 meters in diameter and 30 meters tall, containing several species of plant matter, including Quericus alba, white oak, Ilex aquifolum, European hollybush, and Lanicera sempervirens, Kentucky honeysuckle, though several offshoots composed of other plant species are also present. No anomalous traits have been detected in the molecular composition of the plants. SCP-046-2 is a clearing of grass extending approximately 20 meters around SCP-046-1. SCP-046's anomalous effects extend principally to animals, including humans, that are threatened by chronic or debilitating illnesses or injuries. SCP-046 is frequently visited by such individuals. Humans of this type report having felt a compulsion to travel to SCP-046's location often reporting that the location came to them in a dream. Psychological evaluations have consistently shown that such individuals were not previously aware of either the Foundation 
or SCP-046's specific properties. Individuals feeling this compulsion have all reported having been within a 50 kilometer radius of SCP-046 at the time. This is believed to be the outer range of the object's compulsive range. Individuals who come to SCP-046 consistently describe a dream in which they lie down in the vicinity of SCP-046-1 and rest. Immediately upon entering SCP-046-2, individuals suffering from chronic pain or traumatic mental conditions will describe their symptoms as receding, accompanied by a feeling of calmness, relaxation, and euphoria. Individuals lying down in front of SCP-046-1 will begin to be covered by several vines, similar to runners of Cynodon dactylon plants, also known as Bermuda grass, followed by the apparent sprouting of C. dactylon all over the body. SCP-046 has no compulsive properties, and its effects will only manifest on individuals willing to experience the effects voluntarily. Individuals exposed to SCP-046 will remain communicative until they are no longer visible beneath the grass growing across their bodies. All individuals exposed to SCP-046's effects describe a feeling of peace and serenity, and a happiness that they were able to die pleasantly. SCP-046 appears to fully decompose individuals exposed to its effects within two hours, and may or may not use decomposed tissue as a food source. Addendum 046-1 SCP-046 to be reclassified as Euclid, and primary containment document to be rewritten to demonstrate SCP-046's predatory nature, by order of O5 Command. Any references to voluntary individuals are to be removed. Description to be rewritten to emphasize volatile and lethal nature of SCP-046, and potential threat thereof. Addendum 046-2 there is no evidence whatsoever that SCP-046 is predatory or has any desire to harm any creature unwilling to expose itself to SCP-046's effects. Suggest original containment procedures be reenacted and voluntary access to SCP-046 continued. No individuals are capable of breaching Foundation security once exposed to SCP-046. As such, there is no reason to deny afflicted individuals the opportunity for relief. Likewise, there is no reason to make this entity seem more hostile than it actually is, aside from a desire to portray every object in Foundation custody as dangerous. Some things must be contained simply because they are strange. Dr. Edward Carter, Head Researcher, SCP-046 Addendum 046-3 Dr. Carter, Principal Researcher for SCP-046, is to be removed from his position and reassigned to the SCP-1250 project. Addendum 046-1 stands by order of O5 Command. Item Number SCP-124 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-124 is to be kept in a 4.2 meter by 2.1 meter stone pit in its containment cell. The pit is to be 1.5 meters deep. A plastic tarp is to be placed over SCP-124 when not in use. Absolutely no biological matter is allowed within one meter of SCP-124 when not being studied. An armed guard is to be stationed outside of SCP-124's cell at all times. Description SCP-124 is a plot of soil approximately 9 square meters in area and 14 cubic meters in size. It was recovered from a Detroit basement when authorities were notified of two teenagers growing large amounts of marijuana. SCP-124 has the ability to grow any biological organism to its fullest potential in a relatively short amount of time. The length varies according to the complexity of the organism. Nothing growing in SCP-124 requires external nutrients or other resources. For example, a tomato plant would not require water or light. Pesticides, too, aren't needed, as SCP-124 has a repellent effect on any insect or other invertebrates not growing in it. Any food grown in SCP-124 is reported to be of very high quality, taste, and nutrition, no matter what state the food was in before being planted in SCP-124. Document 124-1 List of items grown in SCP-124 
The following is a selective list of objects grown in SCP-124 during experiments. Input: Tomato seed. Product of SCP-124. A fully grown tomato plant. All tomatoes, 12 on each plant, were ripe and juicy. Reported to be, quote, very tasty. Input. Small watermelon, 0.8 kilograms. Product of SCP-124, 11.1 kilograms, or 24.5 pound watermelon. Reported to be, quote, very sweet and tasty. Input. Grass seed, 1. Product of SCP-124. SCP-124 quickly sprouted into a lush green lawn within a matter of seconds. Slight dew on the grass. Input. Small overgrown hedge. Product of SCP-124. A hedge, trimmed and shaped like a dolphin. Input. Small overgrown hedge. Product of SCP-124. A hedge, trimmed and shaped like a skull. Input. Small Labrador Retriever Puppy, Sandy Brown. Product of SCP-124. A fully grown, bronze-colored Labrador Retriever in peak condition. Currently living with Dr. Church. Input. Small Caucasian Fetus, Male. Product of SCP-124. Data expunged. After killing six personnel, the subject was terminated by SCP Containment Team. Input. Fly Larva. Product of SCP-124. Data expunged. Level 5 lockdown was initiated. Item Number SCP-143 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-143 is to be contained in the valley adjacent to Bio Research Area 12, an area over 2 kilometers squared. Area surrounding SCP-143 for up to 20 kilometers and all lines of sight from the surrounding hilltops are to be denied public access. SCP-143 is to be watered twice every day on a regular basis via a large sprinkler system, unless already watered by local precipitation. Personnel are not allowed to enter the enclosure without Level 4 administrative clearance and are advised not to touch any of SCP-143, nor stand beneath them, unless wearing proper protective gear. It is important that no one be within the containment area when SCP-143 begins to shed. However, after the shedding is concluded, the collection of the fallen petals for testing purposes has been authorized by the project director. Description: SCP-143 is a plantation of 300 specimens of a unique type of tree. The trees are similar in appearance to Prunus yetoensis, Japanese sakura, or cherry blossoms. They bear no fruit, and the only known way of reproduction is by careful own root propagation, using cut saplings from an older sample. The petals are a light pinkish color, slightly translucent, and with a texture of smooth glass. Care must be taken when handling the petals, as their edges are razor sharp and can easily slice through flesh if mishandled. The wood and bark are a light grayish color, with a texture expected of wood although the grain is very smooth to the touch. However, the petals and wood of these trees are much harder than most natural or man-made substances, reaching up to 5,000 HP on the Brunel scale and withstanding temperatures of up to 1,800 degrees Celsius. The weight-to-strength ratio surpasses even that of titanium, being some 15% lighter than aluminum. Despite this hardness, the wood and petals are quite supple and are as pliable as most woods are. Both are notoriously difficult to work due to their properties, but under high temperatures, upwards of 1500 degrees Celsius, separate pieces are capable of being fused together. They make excellent armor, shielding, and weapons. Due to the slow growth of the plants, the material is slow to harvest, although the petals are shed regularly enough, falling from the trees twice every year. Addendum 143-1 The trees were grown on site, from saplings obtained from parent plants, located in Nara Prefecture, Japan, in 1905. The parent trees were owned by a family of traditional swordsmiths, claiming to be descended from a legendary sword maker named Amakuni. They referred to the original trees as Haki no Kodachi, or the Bladewood Grove. 
It is from them that the Foundation gained the techniques to cut and work the wood and petals into serviceable items. The original trees are still in Japan, owned by the government, and still tended to by the same family. However, the government has denied all existence of the trees, and any products made from them are kept within the country. Document 143A We lost three staff to 143 today. They were collecting petals dropped by the trees the previous day when a sudden gust picked up, shaking a good deal of the petals from the trees and blowing them around. Stayed that windy for the whole day. I'd send a cleanup crew, but it's still pretty windy, and the odd petal is still falling. We'll have to pick up the remains when the wind dies down in a couple days. Item Number SCP-197 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures To maintain secrecy, SCP-197 has been emptied and abandoned. Under cooperation with local city officials, the building and many other nearby structures have been condemned. On-site security are to check the premises on a weekly basis to physically remove any plant material. The use of fire is not recommended unless it is necessary to facilitate the total removal of any vegetation found within SCP-197. Herbicides are to be applied on a monthly basis to discourage any future attempt at growth. Description SCP-197 is a plant nursery and greenhouse located at- Currently, the site is abandoned, although previous containment procedures were to maintain the location as a nursery. Most of the anomalous properties of SCP-197 are located within the glass structure of the greenhouse, although research conducted at the time of the site's abandonment suggests that SCP-197 has a wide sympathetic influence in the surrounding area, which has displayed a level of deterioration equal to SCP-197 itself. Organisms within the Kingdom Plantae that grow within or are introduced to the greenhouse take on additional characteristics, including self-awareness, sensory awareness, sapience, and capacity for language and mobility, despite a lack of nervous system, brain, sensory organs, vocal cords, or musculature. Organisms also typically have an increased growth rate and elongated lifespan. Angiosperms that flower only at night or for short periods of time will be in a perpetual state of bloom while within SCP-197. Organisms removed from SCP-197 cease to display anomalous properties, but will retain their hardiness and overall health. Organisms which lose their sapience upon removal from SCP-197 will regain it upon reintroduction with no change in personality. With few exceptions, these organisms do not appear to greatly value their sentience and are often eager to leave SCP-197 despite being unable to experience the world outside as anything other than a typical member of their species. All organisms animated by SCP-197 display positive personality traits and affection for Foundation personnel and other forms of life, even carnivorous plants introduced as part of Experiment 197-63. Seymour SCP-197 duty was often used as both a reward and therapy for agents and researchers, who have concluded a stressful assignment or experienced a traumatizing event, as interactions with animated organisms were almost universally described as relaxing. Under the direction of the late Dr. Kingsley, SCP-197 testing involved distribution of organisms cultivated within SCP-197 to the public at large. A positive influence upon the poor urban community around SCP-197 was noted immediately, with both a reduction in crime and an increase to the average standard of living that has equally been reversed following the condemnation of SCP-197. Dr. Kingsley theorized that this was a result of SCP-197 itself, creating a cycle of nurturing symbiosis between the community and plant life. Addendum Testing and maintenance of SCP-197 was halted following Incident 197-A644. Dahila Kingsley's decapitated body was found within the greenhouse, her severed head cradled within an empty flower pot, being held by an ivy that had been present at the site since the time of its discovery. Dahila was the daughter of lead researcher Dr. Kingsley and a trained botanist who was alone inside SCP-197 at the time of her death. This was the first instance of any act of violence on the part of organisms raised within SCP-197. 
The ivy plant responsible for the killing compared its action to picking a pretty flower and displayed no remorse, although it expressed concern over Dr. Kingsley's reaction and well-being. All organisms distributed from SCP-197 were retrieved and eradicated. Those within SCP-197 were eradicated upon removal from the site, with the exception of the ivy. Data expunged. Item Number SCP-199 Object Class Plant Containment Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures A garden of SCP-199 has been built at Site-19 for research and containment. The garden is kept in a ventilated containment unit with artificial light suitable for plant growth and an automatic watering system. The ceiling is covered with an electrified grate capable of destroying instances of SCP-199-2. The entire chamber is to be surrounded with a Faraday cage to prevent emission of SCP-199-3. Instances of SCP-199 or SCP-199-2 found outside of containment are to be destroyed with fire or pesticides. Description SCP-199 is a species of fern within the Hymenophilaceae family. SCP-199 is tangentially related to filmy ferns, but is more tolerant to temperature, humidity, pollution, and external damage. The rhizomes of the plants can attach to and grow on most solid surfaces. SCP-199's appearance is similar to that of Thallos liverworts, but its fronds are unique to its species. The fronds of SCP-199 will form into bladders approximately 10 centimeters in diameter, designated SCP-199-2. Eventually, they will fill with hydrogen gas generated by SCP-199, detach from the main plant, and drift into the air. SCP-199-2 will eventually float at one mile above sea level and begin to ripen. During this period, SCP-199-2 will emit SCP-199-3 at an initial rate of one signal per hour, steadily increasing as SCP-199-2 ripens. Once SCP-199-2 is ripe, it will burst, releasing its contents. In most cases, SCP-199-2 is empty and its explosion will not have any consequences. Occasionally, the explosion of SCP-199-2 will release seeds that grow into new instances of SCP-199. SCP-199-3 refers to radio signals produced by SCP-199-2. All radio signals consist of a high-pitched male voice, speaking in Mandarin Chinese, giving analysis reports, consisting of observations made from SCP-199-2 and status reports of SCP-199-2 itself. Analysis of SCP-199-2 has shown that neither the source of the voice nor the radio signals exist, as most instances of SCP-199-2 are empty. SCP-199 seems to thrive in polluted environments, implying that it is adapted to grow in heavily populated areas. In addition, SCP-199 is resistant to most pesticides, SCP-199 is most commonly seen growing in chimneys, gardens of large cities, and inside of industrial factories. SCP-199 was originally discovered after residents of Xi'an, China reported balloon-like objects colliding with hotels and interference with radio devices. The source of SCP-199-2 was found to be a patch of it within the center of the city. Instances of SCP-199 have been since discovered in several large cities. Most notably, New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Beijing, and Tokyo. Analysis of SCP-199-3 From 09-12-2017 to 09-19-2017, large-scale analysis of SCP-199-3 was conducted by the Foundation. Large containment cell number 45 at Site-9 was temporarily converted into a simulated urban area. Five instances of SCP-199 were moved to the area for testing. The following is a transcript of SCP-199-3 transmissions, as well as notes in italics. This is Staffman Foxtail, launch successful, entering watching mode. 
Transcript of SCP-1993 after launch of SCP-1992. Name and rank vary per instance. Targets found. Beginning following mode. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above simulated civilians. Targets performing clumping. Engaging. Targets entering phase. Engaging. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above a gathering of simulated civilians. Engaging in Armageddon. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above a gathering for two minutes. Armageddon failed. Disengaging. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above a gathering for five minutes. It is unknown what would occur if Armageddon was successful. Evasive drift initiated. Course moved. Obstacle encountered. Moving from course. Transcript of SCP-1993 while avoiding buildings. Single target engaged in protection lists. Retreating. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above a member of D-Class personnel, disguised as a New York citizen on a balcony. Single target engaged in that of protection. Standing by. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above a member of D-Class personnel disguised as a New York citizen on a balcony, while the balcony had flowers. Non-target found without that of protection, colored blue. Transcript of SCP-1993 after floating above a balcony with flowers without a civilian. Color changed depending on type of flower. Standing position recovered, entering malign phase. After this was recorded, SCP-1992 instances actively avoided balconies. Unintelligible. The Paragon. Emitted by a contained instance of SCP-1992 while floating above Site-19. Payload ready for deployment soon. Standing by. SCP-1993 as SCP-1992 became close to explosion. Sorry, it looks like we have a mayday here. Please avoid future infertility. SCP-1993 before explosion, when SCP-1992 was empty. We have a complete deployment ready. Pleasure to serve you, sir. SCP-1993 before explosion, when SCP-1992 had spores. If you could tell them I loved them. One instance of SCP-1992 emitted this while idle and appeared to be cut off mid-sentence. Context unknown. Many variations and idle phrases cut out of this document. Addendum On 09-21-2018, residents of Istanbul, Turkey reported a collective cloud of over 50 instances of SCP-1992. Before a task force could respond to this, all instances simultaneously burst. Instead of seeds, SCP-1992 released an acidic slime that caused severe damage to a road intersection and created three casualties. An ongoing disinformation campaign was released, crediting the source of SCP-1992 to be a bioterrorist attack. The source of this phenomenon was identified to be a patch of SCP-199 on the outskirts of Istanbul. The task force attempted to use fire to destroy these plants. However, SCP-199 reacted with the fire and exploded into acidic green slime injuring five Foundation agents. Following destruction of the patch, analysis of the soil revealed that SCP-199 had been planted there four weeks earlier. This new variant of SCP-199 has been tentatively designated SCP-199-B. SCP-199-B has also been reported in Mumbai, Lagos, and Mexico City. Near the patch found in Lagos, a partially biodegraded plastic seed packet was recovered buried underground. The front of the packet had a symbol resembling an eye, with a red iris, with a green substance covering a third of the eye. The back of the packet had a symbol strongly resembling the Foundation's shield logo, but with the arrows pointing away from the shield, and three vertical bars covering the shield's inner circle. Item Number SCP-200 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-200 requires a temperate, secure environment, large enough to house the 1.68 by 2 meter bed frame it is affixed to. The room should be equipped with a large viewing window, such that SCP-200 may be observed with minimal disturbance. In fact, when not being directly tested, SCP-200 should be left undisturbed. 
Particular care should be taken when collecting samples to avoid compromising the delicate outer shell of SCP-200. An automated mister should be set up to apply a fine mist to SCP-200 once a day. If SCP-200 appears to be drying out, an additional mist can be applied, but care should be taken not to allow it to become too moist. Due to the uncertain nature of SCP-200, the door to its containment area should be kept locked at all times, and direct interaction is restricted to clearance level 2 staff as a precaution. Description SCP-200 is contained within a chrysalis, measuring 172.4 centimeters in length from stem to tip, attached to a standard queen-size bed frame and mattress. The chrysalis is a mottled brown in color, and analysis shows it to consist of several layers of silk, woven in such a way as to be coarse to the touch. The silk layers appear to be held together by data expunged. SCP-200 itself was last seen as a 13-year-old Caucasian male, measured at 152 centimeters in height and weighing 168.73 kilograms. It retreated into its chrysalis on date undisclosed and researchers have been unable to explain how the child produced the silk to construct its encasement. Ultrasound tests have been unable to detect any solids within the chrysalis. However, fluid samples extracted from within reveal human DNA, matching that of the child in question. It appears that the child has data expunged. Samples of the data expunged, used to bind the chrysalis, are also a DNA match for SCP-200. SCP-200 lies dormant a majority of the time, although it may be observed twitching occasionally, particularly if it is startled by sudden contact or a loud noise. However, in its current state, it poses no threat. Notes SCP-200 was retrieved from USA in 2000 approximately 28 hours after Chrysalis presented. According to medical records, SCP-200 followed a normal pattern of human development until age 12. At this point, the child began to display a voracious appetite and rapidly gained weight over the course of the following year. A local pediatrician was unable to identify a cause for the abrupt change in metabolism. The child's mother, concerned about his weight gain, attempted to restrict his diet. SCP-200 escaped into the surrounding woods. When authorities located the boy 72 hours later, he had doubled his weight on a diet of data expunged. After being returned home, SCP-200 developed its chrysalis. Following retrieval, Class A amnestics were administered to the child's mother, the pediatrician, and local authorities. Local community was led to believe that data expunged to prevent concern about the boy's whereabouts and well-being. Addendum 200-01 According to the most recent testing, SCP-200's DNA has been displaying a number of mutations. While ultrasound tests still reveal no solids, Dr. R hypothesizes that the child may be developing into data expunged. This hypothesis remains controversial and requires further testing and observation. In light of these developments, request to reclassify SCP-2000 under Euclid has been approved and 24-7 observation shifts are being implemented to watch for SCP-200's emergence. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.